We, the people, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter? <laughs> Wait, that's not how it goes, but frankly, I feel that that's how it's become. We, the people, use, depend on, hate, can't stand, yet we embrace social media on a regular basis. What can we learn from our forefathers like Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr about our use of social media? What about print newspapers? How can they apply to our use of social media? And what about the Constitution? How can that apply to our use of social media? And how can social media impact our view on the Constitution? Scrolling through Facebook one day, you may come across the following uh, post on a scanner feed. Young man driving recklessly on 41 southbound. It was just posted already 32 emotion reactions to that. First comment, Brenda, just drove past him, took a picture, almost got in an accident myself when taking it, but thought everyone deserved to see who the maniac is. <laughs> then Susie posts, Betty was drunker on drugs. Wow, that car looks familiar. That must have been my neighbor, Tracy. The following, then the next post is from Tom. Tracy's my cousin. Of course, everyone's related when you, know, when you recognize vehicles on Facebook. They're always drunk. Saw him at drinking last weekend. Then, of course, puts in a well-placed meme of Austin Powers, I also like to live dangerously. Jill then indicates, OMG, I hired him to trim my trees this week. I'll be calling and cancel first thing tomorrow. I'm not having someone like that on my property. And then there's George, <laughs> already jumping the conclusions. Throw away the key, lock him up. Then lastly, an update, just a few minutes after. Driver was suffering from a medical episode. No suspicion of drug or alcohol activity. How does that social media thread impact us on a daily life? How does it impact Tracy? What if you were Tracy? How would that impact you on a daily life? What about your job, your employment, your family? How would that impact that? Even the slightest comments on Facebook can impact the average person to, and have a catastrophic effect. Social media, as mentioned earlier today, is something we all use. And in fact, in 2017, the United Supreme Court, in deciding a case regarding social media, determined and embraced the concept that at least seven in 10 Americans use social media on almost a daily basis. That's a pretty significant number. But first, you must see what social media means. Social media means it's a group of internet-based applications that build on the ideological and technological functions of the World Wide Web, which allows the creation and exchange of user-generated content. It really means users share information among each other. We're supposed to test each other's validity. We're supposed to like, embrace, share, learn from what others have to say. That's really what social media is. But the one thing that's missing is there's no traditional applications of traditional journalism. There are no tests. Anyone can post anything. Well, how can this really impact the Constitution? Through my life, I have represented several individuals accused of various types of offenses, ranging from animal cruelty to embezzlement. And you can only assume what those Facebook threads and those articles were about then. Sometimes about the defendant's mugshot, sometimes about the defendant's family, sometimes about the crime itself, sometimes just about the headline, not even about the article. There was significant misinformation, and information that was relayed that really had no basis being on social media. So how is this a problem, and how can we handle that problem? In order to address that, we have to basically go back to history class. We have to go back to when the Constitution was written back in 1797. And there was a group of well-established men that all got together and established a set of rules for the Republic. 
And in those rules, there was various articles about how the government should operate, as well as there was this Bill of Rights, this thing that was supposed to apply to individuals and have uh, various rights associated with them. The three articles dealt with the executive, the legislative, and the, the judicial branch. Frankly, a lot of that stuff in that Constitution, the articles really doesn't apply to me on a daily basis. It doesn't apply to a lot of you on a daily basis. It's how the government functions. It's how the government is supposed to work. What does matter are the articles of that Constitution, or the Bill of Rights of the Constitution. Those are the amendments. You've heard them a dozen times. Those include the right to free speech, the right to assembly, the right to travel, uh, the right to association, the right to bear arms, numerous various rights. But really the right that matters and the amendment that matters here today for my top topic is the Sixth Amendment. And that Sixth Amendment is really what gives individuals the rights if they're accused of offenses and of, accused of crimes. The right to an impartial jury, the right to confront the evidence against you in court, the right to an attorney, those are rights that are important, and social media constantly is con in conflict with those rights of the Sixth Amendment. Going forward and looking at the social media thread that I just went over before, and looking at how there's an update as to what actually happened, and then recognizing that all the comments that I went over in that thread really do not apply to what actually happened. And oftentimes, that's what the case is on social media. Oftentimes, people come in, jump to conclusions, make their opinion, are not informed, and ultimately are in contrast with what actually occurred. I have never witnessed a law enforcement officer getting on Facebook on a scanner page and explaining what actually happened. I've never seen that. There is tons of misinformation on social media. So how can we deal with this? How can we ultimately figure out what we're supposed to do with social media and its daily impact on the Constitution? Well, frankly, as in Scooby-Doo and the Mystery Gang, the answer is really right in front of us. It is here. We have the answer and we have the tools. Back in 1807, Aaron Burr was accused of treason. Aaron Burr, if most of you don't know, he was the individual who had ultimately murdered Alexander Hamilton. But Aaron Burr, after that, had been accused of treason. And in his treason trial, it was incredibly difficult to seat a fair and impartial jury for Mr. Burr. In the Supreme Court decision, Chief Justice Marshall had indicated that because of the intense media accounts and because of the overwhelming public debate, and public discussion regarding this, that Mr. Burr's rights to a fair and impartial trial could be impacted and should be considered. So ultimately, that created the concept of pretrial publicity. Pretrial publicity is, is really just a articles or topics or discussion about a case that prejudices the viewer, the reader, the listener, to form an opinion before all the appropriate evidence and all the necessary evidence is given. Now, I gave an example from 1807. There's actually a, a more recent example which deals specifically with social media. That example is from Great Britain. It's a case of uh, Regina versus F and D. F and D happened to be the two juveniles, uh, female teenagers, that were accused of murdering their neighbor. And in that case, the two juveniles had denied that they had committed the murder, and therefore they went to a trial. And throughout that trial, the first few days, it was pretty intense. There was substantial news coverage, as one can assume in a case like that. There was substantial news coverage, which the judge started to take note of. And this is important. The judge decided to, to look at the comments and the threads of those news articles on Facebook and other social media sources, and at first directed the news organizations to take down the comment section of the articles. That is, still publish the articles, but not allow the reader 
to comment. Ultimately, it didn't work. And it didn't work because the judge later declared that the case had to be mistried. And what that means, a mistrial means, is that the case basically has to end and then start over at a later point with a different jury and a different day. And it's, it's really a lot of, it's a, it can be a big mess and a big hassle. The judge actually, in doing that, ordered that the news media outlets do not even describe what actually occurred. As he described that the comments that, that he saw on Facebook and on the other threads were vile, the, the quote unquote vile comments. So Great Britain decided to basically research this issue and see what they could do. And in doing so, what Great Britain did is that the, United, the Attorney General for the United Kingdom, just March of this year, issued an, an opinion or decision regarding social media and its impact on the justice, the justice system. Finding ultimately that the justice system is well equipped and is equipped for social media. Okay, it seems like it's just punting the ball down the road a little bit, but it's not. If you think about back to Aaron Burr, and you think about what, where we've come since then to that Regina case, social media can, and traditional media are a problem in our court system. They always have been. It's how we handle it. In one study, over a course of a several month period, 90 verdicts were looked at, 90 verdicts of trials. And of those 90, 21 of those 90 that were challenged on social media grounds, 21 of those verdicts were overturned or retried as a result of whatever occurred. Oftentimes it was jurors in the courtroom utilizing social media to further their interest such as creating a poll, whether they should find someone guilty or not guilty, or using information from a Facebook thread to find a person guilty or not guilty, or using information that was not presented in court or in a trial to find somebody guilty or not guilty. Going through social media and using social media on a regular basis, what can we do? How can we avoid situations like that, situations like Regina, situations like Aaron Burr? And that's frankly to become informed. We need to begin to challenge social media posts. We should begin to challenge what our friends post and what our friends share if we know what the truth is. I'm not out there advocating that we should challenge every one of the shares that, that my father-in-law does on Facebook. I am saying that we need to look at what is true and what is not true. If we know something's not true, we should say something. We should not share something that we do not know as true or, or not true. On social media, we have to not become complacent. We have to understand what our role is. Our role is to share information, to share ideas, and to basically come together as a community. Is social media to blame for uh, negative social trends? The answer is no, I don't think so. We've frankly become lazy. We've become individuals that want a, a quick fix. We want to have the instant emotional reaction to a news story. We want to be part of the 32 people that had an emotional reaction to someone driving recklessly on 41. We wanted to be one of those people. Just like I look at BuzzFeed or Upworthy or any other source on the internet for my news, my parents and grandparents looked at different means. They listened to Walter Cronkite or Tom Brokaw or Peter Jennings. It's fine that I look at BuzzFeed. It's fine that I look at Upworthy. What's not okay is if I don't test that news article, if I don't test those comments the same way traditional journalism is tested. Now let's take a look at where we could be if we take my advice and basically 
Think before we, we talk, think before we write, and think before we click. I hope everyone is okay. I'm going to avoid the situation for a while. If we would all do that on scanner pages and on Facebook and recognize and be empathetic and appreciate what people are doing and be nice to one another, that would be a win for humanity and also a win for the Constitution. Thank you. Thank you.